the weather. It's there every day. Sun, wind, and rain are basic to life. But sometimes the weather is more than just that. Sometimes it's stronger, violent. The wind becomes a tornado, the rain a hurricane. The Earth's atmosphere, for a moment, makes it uninhabitable. And there is nothing we can do about weather like this but try to predict it, prepare for it, and hope that it never happens here. There is one thing without which the earth would be a lifeless, naked rock. It's the atmosphere, or more specifically, the bottom seven miles known as the troposphere. Seven miles high, about 25 times the height of the Empire State Building, the level where most airliners fly, a gassy bubble surrounds a planet 8,000 miles in diameter. And that bubble is saturated with water vapor, millions of gallons of it, about as much as in the Gulf of Mexico. Higher up among huge ranges of temperature, there are further layers, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. All our weather happens in the lowest level, the troposphere. The sun drives our weather by heating the oceans, turning them into cloud, and by turning the clouds into rain. It's water going up and down in constant motion. Meteorologists like Helen Young track this motion and the changes it causes, trying to predict what's going to happen next. It's all about the basic ingredients of weather. There's three things that you need to get weather. And the three things are air, you need heat, and you need moisture. Because our atmosphere is really just a giant heat engine transferring all those elements in the air from one place to another. Everywhere, the same basic ingredients are mixing. And what they produce can be a sunny day, a gentle breeze, a shower of rain, or a killer storm. What each day brings to people is a lottery. If it's a day for extreme weather, someone will probably die. Every year, storms kill tens of thousands of people. In the worst years, maybe half a million. Recently in Venezuela, a violent rainstorm set off mudslides, which buried villages and caused 50,000 deaths. They're tragic, but killer storms aren't new. Towns in medieval Europe were swept away. Millions were killed in vast floods in Asia in the 1800s. And in just one century, North America was hit by both drought and blizzards. This is the biggest hitter of all, and something that strikes several times every year. It can be hundreds of miles wide, often last more than a week. Hurricane, typhoon, cyclone. Different names from different languages, all referring to the same churning, murderous mass of waterlogged air, with power equivalent to all the world's nuclear armories. In fact, in World War II, more damage was done to the U.S. Navy by weather than any enemy. 
In December 1944, the U.S. 3rd Pacific Fleet accidentally sailed into the center of a typhoon off the Philippines. Three destroyers capsized, 146 planes and 800 men were lost. All tropical cyclones start in the same general areas and in the same seasons, when the ocean has been warmed to at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes they'll pass over cooler water and die out at sea, but as often as not, they slam into sea coasts. Greg Holland studies the power of tropical storms. A hurricane draws enormous amounts of energy out of the ocean and it turns that into huge spiraling winds and the winds grab in towards the center and spiral up to perhaps 200 miles an hour and it's those incredible winds that makes the cyclone so powerful. This huge atmospheric turmoil gets started with simple thunderstorms. It's a study in the transfer of heat. Hot air rises. When the ocean surface is 80 degrees or more, the rising air carries a lot of water vapor with it. But as it rises, the air cools a little, and the vapor turns to droplets, to rain. But that very process releases heat, and this overheated air now rushes to the top of the thundercloud. When that happens, it creates a vacuum underneath, and more wet air whooshes up from the surface of the ocean to replace it. The Earth's rotation causes these vertical winds to spiral around a calm center, the eye. Heat, rain, more heat, wind, more rain. It's like perpetual motion, fueling itself from the warm waters. Hurricanes do stop or slow when they reach land as they run out of fuel, those warm tropical waters, but it takes time. Meanwhile, they hammer coastal communities. Hurricanes and typhoons are the only natural disasters with their own names. One of the biggest and deadliest happened in Central America. It was called Hurricane Mitch. Satellite computer imaging shows Mitch's rain as red. Most of it was right around the eye. It's the rain, the second weapon in the hurricane's armory, that can also do huge damage. These torrents simply washed the land off the mountains. More than 20,000 people died, and the economies of several countries were set back 30 years. But after the wind and then rain, it's the third weapon of a hurricane that is probably the worst. And perhaps most terrifying is the storm surge. This is when huge areas of the ocean get lifted up. 20, 30, in a really extreme case, maybe even 40 feet, and just inundate the whole area. The hurricane's sheer wind power drives waves from far out at sea, increasing the high tide by as much as 20 feet. It's not a wall of water, just an immensely high tide. 90% of people killed in hurricanes die in storm surges. But not everyone can just abandon their homes as the sea surges in. Sue Myers and her family took their chances at home in Fort Walton, Florida. We noticed that the water was up on our sliding glass doors at uh, just like a, a wolf trying to, to get in. It was angry, angry water. The, uh, the glass broke and we, uh, the water was, was ankle deep, and then shin deep, and then knee deep, waist deep. They moved upstairs, and for the duration of the hurricane, and for a few days afterwards, their second story and those of their neighbors were islands. We couldn't walk down there for three or four days because the water